Do you have aphids in your grow room? Well, in this video, you're going to learn how to identify them, what to look for, and how to get rid of them. You're here with Mark Bowell at PerfectGardens.com. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. We got our $2.99 membership, and we have a VIP if you need a little more one-on-one. -on -one. Link down in the description. So before I go any further, I just want to show you real quick how to identify them. This is the clear sign of it. Pay attention to it because this is how it's going to show up in your plants. Your leaves are going to be folding over kind of like in a taco shape, but downward versus upward. And you're going to be seeing more curling on the leaves. So as you can see this right here, it's a, it's a nice little curl. And then it's a concave downward for the leaves. So as you can see right here, it's going long ways, but also side to side. This is going to be how you know you have aphids in your grow room. So let's go ahead and get into the rest. Aphids come in different sizes and colors. Sometimes they can be reddish to pink, yellowish to green, orange, purple to reddish, brown, and black. Aphids really aren't the easiest to get rid of. They actually have a short-term predatory defense and a long-term residual, and I'll get into what I mean by that. Aphids will release a pheromone to stop predator bugs. If that doesn't stop the predators, they'll get assistance. Ants milk aphids for the sugary substance that they secrete from their anus. I know it doesn't sound too pretty, but that's their relationship. In exchange, the aphids will produce honeydew, and in this exchange, the ants produce protection. If that isn't banned, the honeydew will actually turn into a mold fungus, which will end up turning into black mold on your plants. Aphids do not need a male to reproduce, so from one single aphid, you can get an infestation. A generation of aphids is produced by one single aphid, and what I mean by that is an aphid that produces live nymphs will carry developing embryos. With that said, a female can sustain embryos in her ovaries, and even her daughter will already have her granddaughters. This is called telescoping of generations. In different areas, aphids can be known as green flies, plant lice, ant cows, and many others. So just be aware, depending upon where you're at in the world, they will have a different name. A lot of aphids are picky in their food, so it's really interesting. All these different aphids are actually like different crops. So it's not just like one green aphid likes all of them. You have the pink one, the orange one, each of them kind of being attracted to different terpenes of different plants out there. If all that isn't bad enough, aphids transmit vectors. So what that means is the aphids will actually transmit plant diseases from one plant to other as they're sticking their needle into it. Aphids have tube-shaped structures that disperse nutrients and synthesize food throughout a plant. So this is actually how they are not just sucking out the sap, but they're also transmitting diseases, as well as they're also transmitting diseases through toxic saliva. The saliva is actually what creates the yellowing and the curving of the leaves. So that earlier picture I showed you, that's caused by the saliva of the aphids. So why do aphids like your plants? It is because they don't produce their own amino acids. And what they have to do is they have to take the sap from the plants, so the chlorophyll. And because aphids produce their own bacteria, through the process of taking the sap and them having their own bacteria, it produces coenzymes or amino acids, which allows the aphids to mature fully. Without this co-relationship, aphids would not mature. If that wasn't bad enough, aphids also have wings, so they can go from one plant to the next plant, transmitting diseases. Obviously, through this process, there's going to be a reduction of nutrients throughout your plant. We already talked about this. The mold that is produced by the honeydew will produce black mold, and that's not what you want. Your makes your whole product go bad, and really, there's only a few things that will actually make your product trash and will instantly take into extraction. Even extractors won't want to deal with it because it's a hazardous product at that point because of mold spores, if they care. If it's really are those types of bugs that can really destroy your complete returning your investment. Other bugs are more forgiving. So I'm going to talk about the least invasive way to get rid of them to the most invasive way. So the least invasive way to start off with is just to pay attention to your plants. Check the underside of the leaves. Obviously, you're not going to check all the leaves. Look for that curling. All the aphids normally start. I see it every time on one leaf. And if you can just get to that one leaf, that one plant, and defoliar it before it spreads and creates an infestation, you're going to get rid of all your aphids. They always start on just one leaf. You turn that one leaf around 
down and just like hundreds of them. And if you could just get rid of this one leaf, all of your infestation is going to be gone in many situations. Next thing is pay attention to ant colonies. Are there ants traveling in your plants? If there is, then there's a good chance that there's going to be aphids. Check for honeydew. Sometimes you can mistake it as possibly being a snail. Once again, look for the curling and the twisting of the leaves. Obviously, the reason why I'm recommending to go a natural way versus a pesticide way first is because, like you already know, dangerous synthesized chemicals essentially when used around crops that ultimately will be in your kitchen or in your lungs is not good. It also shuts down your microbiology and if you're spending hundreds or thousands of dollars in a microbiology direction why put a pesticide onto your crop that's only going to piss all that money away so once again right microbiology is in line with my directions if you could solve your problem in a natural manner i would highly suggest you do that before you go into the other direction i've always found that aphids like synthetic fertilizer especially the lower quality synthetic fertilizer. We've talked about nitrogen fertilizer a lot, so I won't get too heavily into it, but I have shown you in my past video the natural pathway. Nitrogen is absorbed in the chemical compounds from the sky down to the earth and how it's recollected. If you don't have those types of nitrogens in your soil and you have other types of nitrogens, there's a really good chance you're going to see an aphid infestation. That's not always the case. Aphids also really love weeds. So if you're in an area like the middle of a field and you have a lot of weeds, you might want to create a barrier of five feet around your entire greenhouse, five to 10 feet around your greenhouse, or just remove all of the weeds within a certain area so that the aphids that are hanging out on your weeds aren't getting onto your crop. So there's actually plants that naturally repel aphids like these four right here. Obviously, growing natural plants that repel when you're growing commercially or in large crops don't really work out. But if you're growing in a garden, you only have a couple plants. You're growing in a greenhouse, you have your tomato plants and your lettuce and leaves and all, all that sort. This would be a great way to get rid of your aphids because obviously you're growing in a more biodynamically alive garden. If you're growing a little more commercialized and kind of only growing one crop, ladybugs actually love aphids. Green lacewing larvae parasitic wasp, soldier beetles, and this specific type of fungus acts as a parasite for soft body insects, including aphids. You can use diatonaceous earth. Diatonaceous earth is a microscopic little seashells that as ants crawl over it, they get cut up and die. That's also a very natural way to take care of it. You can put it on the tops of your crop and that will actually be calcium for your plants as well. So that's another way you can take care of aphids. Monitoring weed population. So we already talked about that, clearing out a section of your weeds if it's around a greenhouse or outdoors. Protective covers actually work pretty well. I uh, When I use protective covers, I'm actually using a shade cloth over my entire greenhouse. And I live in Colorado and I am dealing with leaf hoppers, grasshoppers, aphids, spider mites, rodents, rabbits, and a few other things besides mold, obviously, white flies and gnats. Those are all the pests I deal with just in my little garden. And the shade cloth removes 60% of those pests. And that's, uh, yeah, it kind of hurts my yield a little bit, but overall, I'm able to bring in a crop that's super healthy without using anything like a pesticide or fungicide. Now we're going to get a little more intense. If you see a plant that has an infestation, you might want to just remove the plant altogether or completely defan or prune the plant. Once again, look for winged aphids because they're going to be hopping from plant to plant to plant. And I've actually seen where aphids will jump on the backs of the winged aphids and transport to other areas or they'll jump on the backs of a bee and travel on that bee or beetle. And then as the beetle shakes the aphid off, it, it ends up going to the rest of your plants. A little bit more ma mechanical control, you can rub the bottom of the leaves. It's kind of a little disgusting because they squish on your leaves. You can also get a wet cloth and rub them off. Other types of organic insecticides that you can use to control aphids before you get into heavier intense pesticides are neem oil, castile soap, marigold, cow urine, garlic cloves, cinnamon, and you can even create a garlic aphid spray. Last but not least, you have the harsher chemicals like this, like perithium, the azaduranchine, which is azamax, and these other ones, they will come up in different brand names, can also be used to control your aphids. Don't look for the brand name. Turn the bottle around and look for the actual name of the chemical that they're putting into their products. Guys, aphids are not fun. The most expensive crop I ever lost in my entire life was due to root aphids, and I battled them and battled them and battled them, and they just never went away. Good luck, guys. Thank you so much. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great grow, everyone.
Imagine, you know, for the past 3,000, 4,000 years or longer, humans have been eating this plant, living next to this plant, using it for rope. Who knows what we're making out of? We've been using it in history. And then all of a sudden, at the turn of the century in the 1900s, it's pulled from under our feet. 